Good evening. Welcome to Online Sunday School. We're so happy to have you. And for those who will be coming in later, maybe even uh, tomorrow, we welcome you to Online Sunday School. This is for our August 8th lesson, August 8th, 2021, lesson number 10. The Bible and Sexuality. Defending the Faith in a Secular World is our unit. You know, our lesson begins with every day we are bombarded with messages about sex from advertising to news stories to government legislation. Uh, there, you just It's everywhere you go, as they say, it's in your face. Well, God has always has something to say good for us to help us to know how to handle these situations and living in this world. You know, we're in the world, but not of the world. So as children of God, He has a plan for us. He loves us so much. He's not going to leave us to just wander around not knowing what to do. So we're thankful that His precious Holy Word gives us divine guidance. If we follow it, we will be blessed. If we don't, we don't follow, we depart from that and go our own way. It will bring destruction. I just want to bring a quickly just a, just a uh, just a little illustration to show the difference in what if we obey and we don't obey. Or just to say it uh, this way, boundaries are a blessing. That would probably be the best way to say it. Boundaries are a blessing. They're not a curse. Just in the natural. I, I read an article here a while back about some fellas that ignored the sign at a power plant that warned of the extreme danger. Do not go near. Do not touch. Do not do. But they decided that they would do it anyway and they could be safe. You know, there was no danger. Well, those people knew at the electric company it was dangerous and they didn't want anybody to get hurt. That's why they put the sign up and really was making it clear to stay away. But the next day they found this person or persons there they had literally been fried because they didn't obey the warning. So the Lord is gracious to us and he's giving us instructions how to use this and then other things that are dangerous. And so we need to steer steer clear of what, when God says this is a danger area, stay away. We just need to do that and be blessed. Uh, that's what the Lord has for us. So, uh, so the title of our lesson again, The Bible on Sexuality. And our central truth is the Bible gives clear guidelines for human sexuality. Key verse, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. All right. And our learning objectives are to understand and accept God's view of sex and sexuality, and also to sense God's desire that his people will live in obedience to his commands regarding morality. And last, choose to honor God with regard to sexual beliefs and behavior. You know, our bodies belong to the Lord. Our whole being belongs to God. We want to please Him. He loves us, and we want to return that love to Him. And anything He tells us, it's God does not always say no, 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 no to everything. That's not what it is. Now, Satan would like us to think that you can't do anything, that God is against everything. That isn't true. He has a, a boundaries for us to work within, and that's where these staying within the confines of those boundaries, there's great blessings. So let's just get into this lesson and talk today about the goodness of God and His help with, to us within every single area of life. So God brings, a, I pray that God will bring a powerful conviction on those people that are ignoring the plans of God, especially those that would be even in the church world and that would uh, not believe this at all and would just go their own way and sometimes teach that example. I'm not saying in our church by any means at all, but you hear of things around, you know, in, in our nation that is actually shocking. And one thing I do want to mention right now that has come to my mind, and I made sure that I made a note of it here, I think it's very important in all areas of our life that we are we need to be very careful in things that we... I'm thinking specifically like on social media, uh, we, you have to know your audience. Remember that. Know your audience. You, may, the pictures and things that you may post, especially I was thinking in terms of your children, and, uh, and it could be I'm sure an adult, but I was thinking in terms of especially of a child. It, be careful of the audience 
because you're looking at something you've got to think of what is your audience seeing and instead of what you're seeing you may be posting something of say your children of, of uh, something that they're doing that you may think nothing of it that that's just your little girl or that's your grandchild or or your son or whatever but through the eyes of someone else that is not living for God and does not have good things in mind you, there, you want to make sure that that child is not in any way could be compromised that that person could see them and see them as something somebody they would want as you probably well know those kind of things are on the rise so I think it's very wise as a parent grandparent whoever it is when you be, be careful look at things through the eyes of not just your eyes but think about what others are seeing and how this could come across to them all right so we have a great debate going on in our society about these things and thinking that people should be able to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to but that leads to great harm and great destruction for that person and for individuals that they with whom they would have to do we want to say this too is that Satan has a counterfeit for everything that God has sex was not something evil it was something it was a blessing that the Lord had created for Adam and Eve and then for, for subsequent generations that was his plan between a husband and a wife a male and a female Satan has a counterfeit and he wants to drag everything through the mud and make it filthy and vulgar that is his plan because that's who he is that is his nature but the Lord has a wonderful plan and that and it mentions in our lesson that is natural for a man uh, for a man to want to be in a relationship with a woman and but now that woman will make him just completely complete you know I can't say that it's just each person is complete can stand alone a man and a woman alone they can just stand alone but there are many times most people want to get married they and there is can, this can be a great relationship between a husband and a wife together they make a stronger team and our lesson brings out that each person they bring their various talents and abilities into a relationship put those together and they can be a, a great blessing to each other and the Lord is is pleased with that in the sexual relationship in God's plan the misuse did not begin in modern time people say oh things are just out of hand today I've never there's never been anything like this oh yes there has always has been early in the Old Testament people were punished for defiling this blessing from the Lord even God's people look for ways to get around God's command for a lifelong monogamous relationship between a husband and a wife. You think, what in the world? What? This doesn't even make sense. God has clearly lied, uh, outlined what he wanted, and yet there's this rebellion in so many people wanting to think, well, this just couldn't be. Well, in, in our culture, wait a minute, we can stop right there. It's not about our culture. It is what God's Word declares, and we should not let the culture, uh, uh, you know, be, inform us, but we should be changing the culture, not the culture changing us. We should stand firm in that that is right and please the Lord. That's the thing we always want to do is to please the Lord. I want you to know that God never is wanting, He's not being mean and hateful, and He doesn't want anybody to have any kind of a good time and just always be uh, dead serious at all times. That's not His plan. Marriage, uh, our, le our author here in the lesson brings out marriage and the sexual union between a husband and wife is an outward or physical illustration of the union that occurs between God and his followers. Let's go next to part two, chastity and fidelity required. And there are some, there are those that believe that it doesn't matter that you can just, you know, have different partners and all, though you are married and that, and that happens time when they're out and about. I've been shocked to hear I'd like an attorney say uh, this was on national television talking about how that well it was just understandable that uh, when a, a man became involved with a, in an illicit relationship well that what he would do he would get an attorney and he'd get the, that person uh, the other person to sign you know this declaration that they you know they would never tell and all, or whatever that agreement is called and I thought just don't do it just don't just don't get involved in those things and that way you don't have to go through all of that just be faithful just be true now the city of Corinth was absolutely it was terribly sexually immoral it was an awful thing that Paul dealt with dealt with and when these people became Christians he had to teach and to train them 
because they they didn't know they didn't know anything near what God's plan was. So that was what he was doing, was teaching and training for their benefit. He didn't say, well, this is a different culture, or whatever culture it is. That's No. Uh, God, you know, he looks at He doesn't look at us by cultures or by countries or nationalities and all that kind of thing. He doesn't do that. He looks at us as, you know, as mankind. He has created us. It said the city of Corinth, when he went there, that church uh, to establish that church it was known for sexual Im um, immorality it even contained temples devoted to Greek gods and they had they had sexual prostitutes there I mean, had these prostitutes there and these fellows become involved now the, in this and this was a way that they thought they were going to be worshiping and all of that no 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 it was totally totally wrong and, and the Apostle Paul gave them guidance on this in fact he said to them to Stay as clear, get as clear away from that as they could. Don't get anywhere near. Don't get involved. One time I heard a minister say something I thought was really, really good. He said that he uh, counseled a couple and told them before they got married. He said, uh, when you, if you are, after you've been married a while and then maybe you're with somebody, he said, uh, he looked at the husband. He said, he told him, he said, if you're maybe, uh, where you're somewhere and you're maybe working around, going to be around, there's a woman that certain that you really, you seem to really like and enjoy being around. He said, don't be around that woman by yourself alone. The same thing to the, to the wife. You're in a situation where there's somebody maybe you're working with or that you're around this person a lot and you find out that you really get along well and you're really, really kind of attracted to them. He said, don't ever be alone with them again. There are just good things that we need to do to say, well, you know, if you're strong enough, it won't hurt you. It will hurt you. Stay away. Uh, you know, there is no, I don't know of anyone that has gotten involved in, a, in an extramarital affair that planned to do it. But the heartache and heartbreak that's come because of this, what I had mentioned, somebody they felt maybe really comfortable around, maybe too comfortable around, enjoyed being around, and they thought, well, it's okay. You know, maybe even say, like, we're both Christians. Well, you know what? We're still flesh. We're still flesh. We need the Lord to help us and guide us, and we need to help ourselves. God has helped ourselves to His Word. That He He wants us to be blessed. He wants He doesn't want us to have horrible memories and think after when sin has been involved. Yes, you can come to the Lord and certainly by all means quickly get to Him and ask for forgiveness of the sin and steer clear from that. But this is a thing that we must always be aware and be want to steer it farthest way as we possibly can from these things because then when uh, you know these people their lives are ruined and word gets out and uh, and somebody finds out and then it spreads um, sadly and it's a horrible horrible thing but God is gracious and he does forgive but it doesn't mean now go do it again it means steer clear and because it has happened you recognize I, we're within ourselves, we cannot stand. We must depend on the Holy Spirit to help us. The extreme danger of, of this of rationalizing. It won't hurt me. I, you know what? I'm a Christian and I can go ahead and be around this or what, all, whatever I can do. You can, you know, you cannot put yourself in compromising situations. None of us. We can't do it. We can't put ourselves in compromising situations and think, well, I'm strong enough because I'm a Christian. I'll be okay. No, because we are a Christian, we want to steer clear of anything. And absolutely, even if nothing is going on, we don't want to get involved in something that would maybe even appear. There could be the appearance that something could be going on. We want to be true, honest, and faithful before the Lord, that there be no cause that we could bring shame uh, and disgrace to the to God and to his kingdom. Any other uh, way of living but just that of being faithful to the Lord. And the Lord had, had the, the uh, two, two genders, male and female, and there is nothing else is to be accepted. You know, that is God's plan, and that's what we want. We were, I held revival for a pastor in Kansas, and he told about a young man that had gotten into a, a homosexual relationship. And this uh, young man had come to him. He wanted to come to the Lord and give his life to the Lord. He told how that finally 
Well, he, and he told me, he said, yes, you can be helped, that you can be delivered, and have, God will bless you, God will give you direction. And he worked with this young man, he gave his life to the Lord, but, but then he turned back. But he told the pastor, he said, I want to tell you before I leave, that I won't be coming back anymore. He said, I don't think I can ever be clear. I just can't get, I just can't break free. And he said, but I want you to know what this lifestyle is like. He said, it is totally miserable. He said, it's an awful lifestyle. And he said, just like you sense and know you recognize when you're with a fellow Christian, we recognize the relationship that we have with somebody else. We, so it was something to, to think about. He said, it was, it was heartbreaking to see this young man in the, uh, the struggle that he was going through, but yet he didn't want to resist. But I want you to know this. It is a redeemable offense. We can come to the Lord. He is always there listening he is ready to help he is ready and willing he gave his life on the cross for us he was risen from the dead he is alive today to minister and to help every single one of us to be like him no matter how deep the sin may be we can come to the lord we can be forgiven the lord will help us and bless us now we close with this what is god saying to us sexuality is a gift from god and he specified how the gift is to be used. Our lesson goes on to say that sadly after the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, people desecrated this gift from God. As believer, we must recognize the right and wrong way to use this gift. We must also hold up a standard for what is right and do all we can to help others find and follow the way of the Lord. Oh, I love this way of the Lord. It is a way of blessing. It is the way, it's a way to get to the glory world, to live with him forever and ever. I choose to live for the Lord and be faithful. May we make that choice to honor him, revere him, and then teach others and tell others how happy you are that you're obeying the Lord and the blessings of honoring the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And until next Sunday, but if you do not have a church home, you're welcome to come to Elgin First Assembly of God, Elgin, Oklahoma. Otherwise, we will be here on usually late Saturday night or very early Sunday morning. We have online Sunday school. If you do have a church home, we want you to be there. May the Lord bless you and keep you again. I said, till next time.